do you do you perhaps feel that when it comes to entertainment, um, that the BBC and Channel Four should be a bit bolder or a bit more comfortable with with those guys who, who also have a strong a stronger PSB remit, but they should be more comfortable doing entertainment programming as well. I think if you look at the history of the BBC, entertainment is threaded all the way through it. I mean, only a couple of weeks ago, very sadly. Bill Cotton, one of the great impresarios of the BBC, died. He'd have un I'd, I'd like to think he'd have understood my speech because he stood for this, for popularity and public service going hand in hand. But entertainment is one of the great traditions of the BBC. But when I was at the BBC, you felt you, you had to keep asserting that tradition. There was always, if you like, the massed ranks of the people who would turn television into something altogether more educational, more altogether utilitarian, if you like. Uh, and, and as I said in the, in the speech, so, you know, in some of these, but with some people you get this kind of quiet sense of this distrust of the idea that television is genuinely popular. Mm. I quoted Lady Plowden, the vice chair of the governors in the 1970s, who, who coined this memorable phrase when talking about Crossroads, that it was distressingly popular. Kind of says it all. And, and over at uh, Horse Free Road, there's a kind of, you know, they're really trying to um, stamp uh, with some authority their, their PSB credentials at the yeah. moment. But you, you yeah. in terms of a, a place for entertainment on Channel 4 as well, it, you, you know, if you use your criteria of entertainment as PSB. Well, um, my background is at least partly making entertainment programmes for Channel 4, Smack the Pony, Brass Eye, The 11 O'Clock Show, Ali G, things like that. So, so that's the Channel 4 I know, and that Channel 4 uh, was a, an irreverent organisation, even at times a subversive organisation. It, its remit is to, to provide an alternative viewpoint uh, uh, and so on. The only point I was making in relation to Channel 4 in my speech, you know, I'm, I feel a very strong sense of connection to Channel 4. Uh, and, and I'm a, a big supporter of it. Uh, the only point I was making is if they go down this road of seeking public subsidy, uh, I hope that fits comfortably with that irreverent stance that they're supposed to take. Okay, good. And in terms of, um, you know, practically what can happen now, obviously this is a, is a, a clear message to, to, to kind of Ofcom. I, I was kind of thinking about what can happen next and it felt as though really the only kind of leverage you might have is the sort of programming budget threat, the idea that actually if we keep going on these roads, if, if I've come pursue it, it's the budget that's going to come in. Is that is that the main leverage you've got, the, the threat of, of reducing the budget? Well, I wasn't thinking in, t in the speech in terms of leverage with Ofcom. It wasn't a speech to lobby Ofcom, if you like. The ITV has got a, a series of issues with Ofcom uh, that are very important issues to our CRR, our advertising formula, our out-of-London quota, things like that, advertising minutage and so on. I didn't want to go into those technicalities. That didn't seem to me to be the right thing for me to do uh, on the platform of the Mc McTaggart lecture. Uh, but I suppose the one thing that, that I would come back to is that the reason that I made such so much of, of the four purposes of PSB uh, as defined by Ofcom is that when talking about PSB it seems to me as if we've now settled that, taken that for granted. If you look at the Ofcom phase two review you'll find it's, it's written pretty much like that. These are the four purposes of PSB. Now let's get on to deciding how it's funded and who's going to be in and who's going to be out and so on. I say, no I want to go back to that. I think you've actually got the definition wrong. The definition, as I pointed out in my speech, is 118 words. It was originally Lord Reith, three words, and yet between three and 118, it's narrowed. Mm. The word entertainment has disappeared from it. Um, and, and finally, you, you talked at some length about the nature of broad in broadcasting, the, the, the desire to have um, a, a broad church. Um, you also talked about the success of ITV2 and ITV3, and those channels, I would say, have been successful because they've identified a niche, they're a bit more focused. And I'm wondering, in, in, a, in a fragmenting world, is there still a place for an ITV1 which has factual and sport and comedy and news? I think that's the big question. I think, it's bit, and I think I believe the answer is yes. And I think that a, a successful family of channel in this world, w in this world, will be a mixture of those channels that are targeting more specific audiences, as ITV two, three, and four, and, and then the general channel. But the question I would ask, and this is a question that is broader than anything to do with definitions of PSB, is as a as a nation, if you like, as an audience, do we still want a number of channels that are doing the full range of 
programmes from which you can go from, from drama to the news to an entertainment show to a documentary to comedy etc. And so I believe we do. I believe, I don't, uh, you can call those public service channels, I call them national channels. They're the big national channels. It's like, do we want a number of big national newspapers? I believe we do and they cover those bases as well. ITV1 is one of those national channels and I want it to remain so but ITV1 I suppose in a sense the question I'm asking is if you believe that and believe that's a good thing and good thing for television and good thing for the audience is that is that something that should be helped or is it something that should be hindered along the way ITV1 to be honest often feels hindered I don't think it should be